to Tabletop CP, Virtual Tabletop CP. Tonight we're in the Tabletop Simulator and we're going to be playing a Chain of Command module that a uh, new member of the Tabletop CP family, Zach, has created. Spent a lot of time doing this and it's really amazing. Uh, we've been messing around with it quite a bit lately and it's, uh, I see a lot of potential in it and I think it's really cool. So uh, we're here tonight. We're just going to do a demo. To show, Zach's going to run through a lot of it to show you how it works. And we're going to do a couple phases. And then uh, that'll be it for tonight. But we'll do a full battle report later, obviously. But uh, for tonight, we're just going to do a quick demo. So uh, Zach, go ahead and uh, why don't you take it away. All right, cool. So I'm just going to kind of go over all of the individual parts right now, just uh, briefly. And the first thing here, this is the player space. Got your force morale tracker. There's a dice roller for the command dice, a dice roller for combat. Got a stack of four patrol markers, your three jump off points. Now the way all this works is uh, these die rollers here. You know, this number right there shows how many dice you're going to roll. The plus and minus, you can change the amount of dice and then just click the number. It'll roll the dice and it will also display the results on the top here. And it'll also display the results in the chat, which I currently have closed. And um, so this one will always be at 5 for your command dice. And then this one you can alter to whatever you need. One thing to keep in mind is uh, rolling the dice while there's dice sitting here. It'll go ahead and replace them. Um, which is handy when you're using the combat roller. But if you accidentally use the um, command dice roller and it gets rid of your command dice, that can be kind of a pain in the butt. So be careful about that. All right, so these patrol markers here, they're in a stack of four. Um, just to grab a patrol marker, you just need to click on it, drag it out. It'll, you know, take them off a stack, stack them back up, you just put them back on top. If you want to move the whole stack, like if you're getting ready to start the patrol phase, just click and hold down, drag it wherever you want. The force morale tracker, uh, this little token here will snap to whatever number you're dragging it to, which is pretty handy. The chain of command die will do the same thing. If you don't have one, I would suggest putting it here. It'll snap to right there. Once you finally have one, you can put it in the center here, and then to change the number, you just want to mouse over it and then hit the corresponding number on the keyboard, and it will change for you. And then we've got our uh, markers up here, like Overwatch, Shock, the shock will actually stack, which is pretty handy. Stacks in the same way that, that the uh, patrol markers do. And then we got tactical, pinned, and broken. All right, and let's move on over to the actual models here. So we've got the six platoons that the Americans and Germans have in the main rulebook. Each of them are represented here. This is just the Americans. Um, when you're deciding which platoon that you're going to play, you'll just come over here. You know, let's say we're going to play the armored rifle platoon. Just get your camera in a way that you can click and drag to select everything without selecting any of the other models. Once they're all highlighted, move your mouse somewhere away from them and then just hit Control C, or you can literally just drag them over to where you want to put them. So we've got, you know, all, all six platoons here the three for the Americans, three for the Germans. And um, more will be coming, but for now, I really wanted to focus on getting the module up and running um, just at its core, so that's why I've just got these ones here. And then let's go over to the terrain. So lots of little bits of terrain here. We've got six buildings. Um, each of them are able to, you can put models inside of them. And by, to do that, you would just right-click on the building and go to State. State 2 takes the roof off. And uh, to be able to put models in it, you actually have to lock the, the table or the uh, building in place. To do that, you just mouse over it, press L. You can see I can't highlight it anymore, which means that it's locked and I can't move it. To undo that, just mouse over it, hit L again. Go ahead and put that back. Whoops, got to put it back to state one. Forgot uh, the most important thing, Zach. Yes. Thanks. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got a whole section for tanks. Everyone loves tanks. <laughs> all right. So as you can probably see when I grab that building, all of these terrains will have that infinity symbol. 
next to it, which means you can just literally click and drag on it, and it'll drag whatever piece of terrain you're wanting. To rotate them, you just click on them, hold them down, Q and E will rotate the piece. And that's going to be pretty much the same for everything. So let's go ahead and delete these and head on over to the supports. We have every support option for the Americans and the Germans in the main rulebook, including all of your uh, teams, all your vehicles, all the big guns, everything. Some of the models are not perfectly to scale. It's not a huge deal, I don't think, right now. I'll work on that at some point, but there's bigger fish to, fish to fry right now. The entrenchments and stuff are going to be in this field defenses thing. To access that, right-click on it, go to search, and it'll have all of them right here. Pretty straightforward. And uh, the last thing I want to show you now before we start is going to be quick reference here. It's the same one that you can find on uh, the website. If you just click on the tablet, you can scroll up and down. Super, super handy. And then to get off of it, just click off of the tablet, and then you can move away. So with all of that being said, uh, we're going to take a little bit to get a table set up, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we have a few things on the table here. Um, one thing that I wanted to show you is I made the bases for the trees and the hills actually pretty small just so they fit on the table over here. What you can do is let's say you want to have like a big area of forest. Just mouse over it and then you can either right click, go to scale, and then just hold down up to scale up, or you can just mouse over it and press the plus and minus keys. And then all you got to do is copy and paste some trees onto it. I'd recommend only putting maybe like four or five around the perimeter just because the models don't interact with that super super well I'm trying to find a tree model that doesn't mess with the models as much but for right now i'd do something just like that just to just to save yourself some some trouble and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing to this one lay a few trees down that should be good. And then we've got some hedges. The hedges are pretty cool. You can uh, right click on them and then change the state. And then it's a destroyed hedge. Uh, these grass, grass patches here. You can see that they're all kind of clumped up. You can do that just by copying and pasting a bunch of them. And then holding them, pressing Q and E. And then just placing them down in whatever, whatever way you want. The buildings showed you before. We'll go ahead and take the roof off. And then the most important thing to do after getting all of your terrain down is you want to click and drag and highlight all of your terrain and just the stuff that's on the actual game table. Move your mouse somewhere not on the table, like up here or anywhere in the background, and press L. That will lock down the entire board so you can't move any of the terrain. The reason why you want to make sure that your mouse is not anywhere on the table is if you were to say highlight everything, put the mouse here and hit L, it'll unlock this part of the table, which will cause you all sorts of trouble. So make sure you don't do that. So now that we have the table finished up, we can decide which platoons we are each going to pick. Uh, Travis, you got a preference? I think I'll just, uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'll just go with the regular old German rifle. And... All right, and I'll grab the the American version of that. Drag them over to one of these trays. Now, one of the cool things about this table is it has these trays that can move in and out. Um, I left two of them empty. One, so you could just put your regular platoon on there and any other forces that your opponent is already aware of. And then once you pick supports, you can put them on here, close it, and your opponent has no idea what they are until you have uh, chose to deploy them. All right, so you got your dudes? Yeah, ready to go. All right, so uh, go ahead and roll for force morale. To do this, you just go to the die roller. It's already on one. Just hit the... Hit the little number. Oh, perfect. I got a one. 
All right, so I'll move my force morale down to eight. What'd you get? Uh, I'm at a nine. I rolled a four. Okay. Not bad. All right, so you want to just do the patrol? The first scenario? Yeah, we'll just do that one. Play a okay. few phases of it, just to show it uh, how everything works. Sounds good. So I will roll one die to see which part of the board I'm starting on. I'm going to be on the right side. Okay, and I'm uh, over here. I'm over here on the right. Okay, so you want to pick up all the patrol markers. Um, I'm actually just going to use three for this one. So you click on it, hold it down, go ahead and plop it somewhere on the section of the board that you're starting on. I think it's the 24-inch square or something. Yeah, it's yeah, right in the middle of that third of the team. Yep. Okay, and then you have the highest force morale, so you'd be starting. All right, so uh, patrol phase works as normal. Uh, all the rules are exactly the same as they are, you know, if you're playing on the tabletops. So nothing different there. So I'm going to move it to 12 inches, and just going to measure it. So to pull out that measuring tool, um, you're just going to mouse over, like, where you want to start measuring from. Hold down tab, and then just move the mouse to wherever you want to go. And then let's say he wanted to go over here. Once you get to 12, just let go of tab, and then tap tab. That'll put an arrow, and you can just move your thing right up there. Another thing that you can do, instead of using that tool, is on the side here you have all your different tools. Um, I believe it's this line tool here. You can either click on that or press F4, and then it just does the same thing by clicking and dragging, and then you just click to put the arrow down. I prefer using tab because then you don't got to mess around with changing tools back and forth, but, you know, teach their own. They both work the exact found, same. I've also found that in the patrol phase, if you go to a straight overhead view of the table, it's Yes, that's, a, that's an important uh, key here. Whenever you're measuring, it's going to be pretty important to always go to like an overhead view of the, of the table because some of these objects, um, if you measure over them, it will actually mess with the measurements. And if you're in a top-down view, you're much less likely to have that problem. So I'm going to go ahead and measure my first move. I'm going to get it right, right inside the building there. Whoops, not all of them. All right, that'll be good. And it's your turn. All right, I'm just going to move uh oops. I'm just going to move another one right on top of uh the first one. All right. I am going to do the exact same thing. All right, then I will move up to the hedge. Okay, and uh, I should probably point out, moving the camera around here, you, the way that I'm rotating it is you just hold down the right mouse button, move your mouse around, rotates the camera. Otherwise, uh, W, A, S, and D will move it around like that. So, pretty straightforward. All right, I am going to make my next move in this direction. And your go. All right, so just to keep the chain going, I'm just going to move the last one up. Yep, I'm doing the same thing. Whoops. And... I'm going to start moving that direction. All right, I am going to move this one. over here See how far over this hedge I can get oh yeah I'm, I've kind of botched up my patrol <laughs> <laughs> that's alright good thing it's just a demo <laughs> 
I could have done right. it a lot better. I'm going to move my next one. Well, I'll make sure I'm within 12. So I'll put a marker right there quick. And then, yep, I can go exactly that far. All right. All right. We are 18 inches apart. Yep. All right. I'll just move this one up here. Okay. I am going to... I don't want to go this way. That'll be a table edge for sure. All right. I'm just going to go over towards the field. See if I can get up into those trees. All right. So these two are 18 inches away? Yeah. Okay. This one, let's see if I make sure I'm staying within 12 here. So I can only go that far, which is definitely within 12. So I'm going to go there. Okay. I know what direction I was going for. <laughs> I can barely move up at all. Um, I'll just move up. The... Is that 12? Yeah, I'm trying to lock them. So okay. Those are locked. Yep, that's good. All right, and then to lock them down, you can lock them the same way you lock everything else. Mouse over it, hit L, just so we don't accidentally bump them around. And then it's my turn. Well, I kind of have to move this one. So I am going to move him. Yeah, I want to get try to get one over in this the woods over here. So I'm going to go there. All right, and I'm going to move up. Yeah, and lock, lock, sure. lock those okay. two. So lock these up, and then I am going to, let's see, hmm, I want to set it up in a way where I can deploy into the trees off of this one. So if we think about where I'm going to end up, I think if I just move I think if I just go there and lock myself, I should be able to end up in the woods. So all three of mine are locked now. Okay. All right, so then uh, patrol phase over. So now let's start placing some jump off points. Okay. Yep, so let's see here. It looks like I'm pretty much table edge everywhere I go. So the line tool will come in handy here. Yep. Oh yeah, oh. I'll demonstrate this while you're doing that. So up here in the vector paint tool, we have a line tool. Super handy for chain of command in the patrol phase, because you literally just draw a line like he is and like I am. And uh, six inches back, that's, uh, that's where you can deploy. So yep, oh. definitely, definitely table edge. Okay. All right, my first one is going to be this guy here, so I'll draw a line from that one. You didn't then... clear all the lines, too. Okay, so, yep, I'm just going to put one. Oh, where did I go? Right in the edge of the woods. Oh, here. great. So you're going to be in cover, I'm going to be in the open. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so my next one is uh, one here. Line tool. All right, so looks like uh, in the trees for me. All right, and uh, to get rid of the line, since it is getting a little muddy right now, just again over to the vector vector paint. The far right one will erase all lines. All right, so my next one will be this dude. Go back to the line tool. 
something like that that go ahead and toss it in the field here all right and i have one left looks like i'm gonna have two well right next to each other here we go all right and my last one hopefully end up in the building here yeah for sure yep okay like. so i'll go ahead and plop that one on in there you can see it falls right inside the building because the building's locked and i think that's the end of the patrol phase all right so now we can go ahead and delete the patrol markers so since they're all locked let's right click on them press delete and leave the uh jump off points it's good to lock those two so that when you're moving your guys around them, you don't accidentally move the jump off points themselves. Would never want to be called a cheater. Okay, no. so normally we'd roll for supports here. We're not going to do support since we're just going to do a few phases to demonstrate how everything works. All right, so it's time for the first phase, and uh, that's going to be going to be the Germans. All right, so... Oh, again, a double phase. You know, like every time we play this, I, my first phase <laughs> is a double phase. What I wind up? One, three, and a. So, well, definitely bring a squad in. All right. I'm just going to grab this squad here. Oops. And rotate them. See how far can I go. So you see how they bumped up against the tree there? That wasn't too bad, but sometimes they'll be sitting on top of there, and it'll just mess everything up. So that's why we like to space them apart like this. And if you have a guy flip over like that, you just click on him, and you hit F. Yep. Flip them around. I'm just going to move my machine gun team over here. And then my rifle team will be here. And one thing that I noticed I forgot to do before the release of the module is uh, I wanted to go ahead and change the base color for the machine gun teams, a distinctly different color so it's easier to pick them apart. So I'll take care of that and I'll update it after, the, after we're done recording the video here. Alright, so they're in Overwatch. Yep, so that's a three, and I got a one left. Um, well, what the hell? Might as well bring my Panzer Strike team. <laughs> so, he'll just go, he'll just go up here. I'm within four inches, I can see out, and I am. Yep. Rotate them, face the building, and that's it. So, next phase. All right. Oh, I thought you were going to get another one. <laughs> so, did I, so did I. So let's see here. Two threes. I can bring, I can bring the rest of the men. So just for sake of it, I'll just put a squadron. I played a game with my brother the other night, his first full game, and I had to invoke the no more than three phases in a row. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and he, he would have gotten a fourth one, too. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little out of hand. It does. It's not so bad like when a new player experiences that, but when it happens to them, yeah, they, they don't want to play the game anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what the hell? I can't do anything. All right, so then I'll just bring my leader in. I have to bring him in over here. With He's, they're going to need some help with the shock here, I'm sure. <laughs> so... Separate my teams a little bit. Yeah, having a different color for the teams. Yeah, I could have sworn that I went and updated that. I, I may have... Uh... Well, you can manually do it, too, though. Yeah, you could do it manually, too. I guess I'll, I guess I'll show how to do that quick. I mean, I'm going to take care of it before I, you know, update the mod again, but... 
just right click, go to color tint, you know, just move it down here like this, voila, darker color. So, but I'll, I'll make sure that I have uh, all of the teams and all the different squads in a platoon in distinctly different colors, so you can tell them apart easier. All right, so I'm, I'm done. I haven't got my entire platoon on the table now. All right, so my turn. All right, so I get to put a point on my chain of command die. I've got a useless six. Uh, two ones and a three. That's cool. So I'm going to use my three. Let's see here. Take this squad, and I'm going to move them. I like the thought of him having to go across all that open ground. <laughs> so well, We're not going anywhere. <laughs> going to put my BAR team in front. Move my junior leader over here. And we'll just rotate these guys, and we'll say that's within six. It should be. Yeah, but remember, you can't shoot through. <clears throat> excuse me, you can't shoot through teams. So those yes, rifles will is, not be able. To... That is correct. So let me go ahead and space these. Whoops! See, there goes the trees again. It'd be nice to have some kind of maybe transparent. Gives yeah, you kind of the I'm... outline of a tree, but it doesn't actually take up physical space. Yep, I'm trying to figure out uh, how to do that right now without having to mess with somebody's model. So it should happen, but it may be a little while. All right. These should definitely all be within six. So, And then we're going to go ahead and put them on Overwatch. So I'll grab one of those. And another one of those. And I will use my two. Or my two ones, rather. Make a two. To deploy my second squad. And they are going to deploy into this building here. Um, and let's see. Alright, so that squad is deployed in the building. Cannot go on Overwatch because I had a lowly two. And we are back to the German phase. All right. All right. I realize I screwed up a little bit because I needed to deploy my Panzer Shrek with the junior leader. He's the only one that can have the fire at. The <laughs> so he's essentially just a bullet sponge now to help the spread hits to that squad of trees. All right. So what did I get? Uh, Five is done. To make a four. Four and a three, and I'll uh, I'll just open up. I'm gonna open up on these guys in the trees. Okay. So with the four, the four, the senior leader is gonna have both of these squads fire. So it's uh, it's a D plus B. One. Fifteen. 15 shot. So we'll do the first one. I'll give you a chance to respond with uh, Overwatch. I wish I could do both at once. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really nice. So uh, here we go. So 15 dice. Uh oh. Leading okay. fives or long. Uh, not oh, very good. That's not three. Very good. <laughs> All right. So they are in. Light cover in the woods there. Yes. Okay. So two on the rifle team, or yeah, two on the rifle team, one on the BAR team. Rolling the BAR team first. That's a three, so nothing. The rifle team, also nothing. Nothing. Okay. So and, you can now bond. Yep, they are definitely going to do that. Okay. They are going to let's see. So the BAR is three, four, five, because both this, both uh, crewmen get to fire as well, right? Right. Okay. So five dice from them, and one, two, three, four, five, six. What are there? Eight guys in the rifle team? I believe so. Yeah, twelve man squad, eight in the rifle, three BAR in a. Yep. So thirteen. I should remember that by now. 
and again needing fives. One, two, three, four hit. All right. So who who are you targeting? The squad that fired. Oh. Um. All right. So I can spread them. Yep. So. Looks like I can spread them to the rifle, red rifle team. So you said five? Yep. No, four. Wasn't it? I think it was four. One, two, three, four. Yep, two fives and two six. All right, so we'll do uh, one on the blue MG42. Oh, I thought I was going to go to the three. So <laughs> my view was hanging on a three. Let's make a note of this here. When you want to keep track of dice, if he pulls it away like that and then rolls again, it's going to delete that die. So it's good to just uh, have a couple extra lying around so that when you want to keep track of it, you can just mouse over it and hit whatever number it is, and you're good to go. So when he rolls the next one, it's going to get rid of that one, but that one will stay. Okay, so that was the MG42, and there's yep. three more hits. So we'll do two on the middle rifle team, the blue rifle team. Nothing. Nothing. And then one on the red rifle. Okay. Another dead. Actually, you could put those up by the team, right? To yep. Keep track. All right, so I lost uh, two guys, one in the red. So I got to roll for a leader there. And the senior leader is attached to both. So let's check the oh, an odd situation that. All right, we'll roll a one for that squad. Red squad, not the leader. And then a one on the blue squad, not the leader. So just a dead, dead machine gun and a dead uh, red rifle. Yep. And uh, as you can see, the infantry models, actually all the models are a collection of a couple different pieces. So you have to actually delete the base and the model itself. Otherwise, you'll just have a random thing sitting around. All right, so now I will fire with the uh, red squad. And the okay. same thing, uh, except minus one shot because I lost my rifleman. 14 shot. And do a little bit better this time. Looks a little better. It's one better. Four hit. All right. All right, so two on the rifle team, two on the BAR. Okay, so two dice on the BAR. So that's one shock. Two dice on the rifle team. That's a shock and a kill. So let's check for the leader. It is not. So one guy dead in the rifle team, and then one shock on both teams. So we'll just delete this guy in the back here. Where'd my shock go? Oh, I could have sworn I brought shock over here. Weird. Must have fallen to the table. Fell to infinity. Yeah. Okay, so we got one shock there, one shock there. Should have deleted these Overwatch tokens already. Okay. And that's it. Yep, so I have a three left, and I'm going to use that for the squad over here in the trees. And do I have line of sight to your squad? I believe so. You're only going through one obstacle. Oh, yeah, oh. definitely. Yep. I forgot these hedges were were uh, tall, but anyway, yeah, that guy. Okay, so it's same thing, 15 shots back at your rifle team. Okay. Three? Three hits. <laughs> all right, so two all right, so on I'm the rifle team. My, I'm going to lose all my overwatch. Oh. Start with the BAR team. One hit on them. That's a shock. Two on the rifle team. That's a shock and a dead. So check the leader. 
It is the leader. Nice. Before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and put my shock over there. Okay. See what happens to him. Yep. See what happens. Four. So that's a light wound. Use a command in it. And that's a bad thing. Yes, it is. So let's check to see what the bad thing is. Oof. Ooh. That's bad. So minus two. Yep. Down to six. And if you're wondering how I was just rolling the die like that instead of hitting the button, if you just mouse over um, any die and press R, it'll roll it. It just doesn't display it on the top up here like when you use the actual roller. It's just something quick that I do when we're doing these sorts of checks. So it looks like we need to come up with a way to mark the leaders who are wounded. For right now, where'd he go? There he is. For right now, I will just, uh, in these notes down here, or even up, up in the name, you can actually go minus one command initiative. And then if you just mouse over him. Oh, well, that'll work then. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, and if you want to get, because there's two pieces here, the base and the model, I should have actually highlighted it and done the whole thing. But so, yeah, that's pretty helpful. Okay, so he is minus Problem one. Problem solved. Problem solved. <laughs> it's a little little more work, but, you know, helpful. All right. I would say how often does it happen, but it happens a hell of a lot. It happened to me like four times playing with my brother, so. <laughs> okay, my face? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead and roll it up. Two to my chain of command. Die. Uh, four, a two, and a one. So, that's nice. I'm going to bring in my platoon sergeant. And I'm going to put him over here. And then before doing anything with him, I am going to use my two and a one to make a three to deploy this squad. And they, I'm going to put them here for now. Place them all down. Put the BAR team kind of off to the side like this so that I can actually fit some riflemen up there. Okay, so I have my third squad deployed here in such a way where they can all fire. They are going to, they're not going to go on Overwatch, they are actually going to fire. Um, let's see. I think I am going to have them fire. Yeah, they can really only see the squad. So they're going to fire at the squad on the tree line over there. So I believe I'm rolling 13 dice. Whoops, that's yours. Wrong camera. All right, 13 dice. Hitting on fives. That's not great. Two hits. Two hits. And, okay, I'll put uh, one on the uh, rifle team. Okay. And I'll put one on that useless panzer truck as well. <laughs> the Ooh. dead rifle. The dead rifle. Let me check the leader. Dead rifle. Okay. And what else you All right, so that squad has done what they can do. I'm going to activate my... I'm going to use my senior leader's command initiatives to get rid of one shock. Whoops, that got rid of both. One shock from each team. And then for his third one, I am going to have them fire. They're going to fire at the machine gun team on your blue blue squad. Thus not allowing me to split all the way to the red squad. Yes. Okay. So I believe I'm missing a rifleman from that squad, right? Or I'm missing a BAR guy too, I think. Uh, 
No, VAR squad's VAR team. I think it's just okay. A so just just a rifleman is gone. So I have my twelve dice, not thirteen. Hitting on five. That's better. One, two, Decent. three, four, five. Okay, so and I'll put. Uh, well, since there's an odd hit. I'm in the open, so you can decide where to put the odd hit. Yeah, I'll put the odd oh, hit on the yeah, five or six. team. That's five. I think five it was hit? five, wasn't it? Let's take a look. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Yeah, five. Okay. Yeah, so, so you yeah, can three, just... three on the machine gun team and the rest on the rifles. All right, so machine gun. Okay. Two shock. Two shock. So let me put those on right now. And the rifle team was uh, two hits. Yep. Oh, a dead shot. shot. Uh, nope, just a shock. Oh, roll or no, you're in the open. Never mind. All right, so let me put the shock on. Forgot you were in the open there. And let me check my leader. So just another dead rifle? Yep. Okay. All right. And I believe that is the remainder of what I have. And I think that's probably good. Keep it short. Okay, so that's it for this one. Uh, we just wanted to show you a couple of phases of action. So uh, hopefully everyone liked it. And uh, that should do it for this video. Uh, stay tuned for uh, more videos in the future from Zach to do some um, um, tutorial type videos, specifically starting with the uh, very basics of the game as far as how to download Steam, how to get uh, Discord, how to get the tabletop simulator from Steam and install it, and then more other videos as well showing how to more uh, in, in depth on how to do terrain. Uh, you got anything left to say, Zach? Um, no, not really. I'm glad the module is finally out there. I'm glad that so far it seems to have a decent decent reception from those that have tried it out. Um, yeah, there are a, a bunch of a bunch of things that I like little tricks that I use to enhance my playing experience that I wasn't really doing now cuz I didn't want to confuse anybody, but I'll make videos on that like uh more advanced placement for terrain. Um, just just fun stuff you can do to improve, or not improve, but enhance your game a little bit, including uh, a very, very basic version of being able to save and recall map, which is pretty exciting to me anyway. Yeah, that'll be a big, uh, big time saver right there, having a, a pre-made map that you can just load and start playing on. Uh, but yeah, this, I mean, this program is amazing. Zach's done a really great job. He spent, I don't know how many hours he spent on this, but it spent a lot and uh, paid off because it, it's really an amazing program, especially for people who don't have opponents nearby or if they just play a quick game on a you know a weekday night against someone, they don't have to get everything out and set everything up on here and, and throw down. So it, it's really a great asset, I think, for the whole uh, chain of command community. Yeah, that was the whole that was the whole point of putting this out there. As I uh, you know, I found your Found the Facebook group, wanted to play a game with somebody, and then a bunch of people seemed interested in the way I was playing the game online, and now here we are. So, yeah, there does definitely seem to be interest in it. Um, so it's hopefully that will expand. And um, the Discord server, uh, Zach's got that uh, the start of it. It's up and running. So if um, you're looking for an opponent, hopefully you can come to the Tabletop CP uh, Discord server, which we'll put a link in the description video. Yeah, and also there'll be a link to the uh, our Tabletop CP Facebook group, our Tabletop CP uh, Patreon page, if you want to uh, help the channel out, get bigger and, and stay up to date and all around get better. And then uh, other than that, um, stay, stay tuned for more videos from Zach, tutorials on how to use this, uh, this module, and, and also stay tuned to the Tabletop CP Facebook page, or I'm sorry, the YouTube channel as well for more battle reports uh, from my end. As I said earlier, Zach is uh, joining the Tabletop CP uh, 
he joined me. I'm the I'm tabletop CP, I guess. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now it's me and Zach. So he's going to be doing some videos on his own on different games entirely, which is good because there's a variety besides the same old thing, sharp practice, uh, chain of command every week. I mean, those are going to still continue, but Zach's going to do some on his end as well. And I think we should mention that uh, for those of you that have a slight interest in this but don't really want to put the money into Tabletop Simulator, you know, just to try it out, I think in the the first full battle report that we do using Tabletop Simulator, which hopefully will be sometime next week, we are going to be giving away a uh, a copy of Tabletop Simulator. You know, I've got a few few extra copies that I picked up to, to help out the community and get those interested in playing if they want to, and I think we're going to try to do that in uh, the next Battle Report. Yeah, definitely. So um, that'll do it for this one. So uh, thanks again, Zach, and thanks for everyone who's uh, watched, and we'll see you next time. Later.